Hi everyone. Today, real quick, I'd like to take some time to share with you five Great Eastern cutlery knives that I feel are ideal for everyday use. Mm, I'm going to start from the ground up, so I'll finish with my favorite uh, using pocket knife. Uh, but the first one I'll bring to your attention here is the 47 Viper. Now this is of their most recent run. Uh, I, ch I chose not to, to get one when they initially did them. Uh, maybe a year, year and a half ago. Uh, um, this time around I did a little more research on it and decided to go with it uh, when, I, when I saw them on the website. What I was most worried about is the sway back handle you know is that going to be comfortable in hand and as i found it, it is it really is and of course draw cut that is going to be where this knife excels i do a lot of apple peeling with my knives so though i haven't used this one yet i, I know it'll be i know it'll be perfect for that um so food prep with my knives is uh one of the things i am most concerned with uh, but they do a fantastic job with this lanyard tube here, lanyard hole. So here in the Midwest, especially in the wintertime, maybe drop a piece of leather on that. Makes it real efficient, that digging out of your pocket, maybe if you have gloves on. Um, so, of course, it's on a single spring, which makes it super thin. Um, very pocketable knife, maybe right alongside your wallet in the back pocket. Not so much in the front pocket, but I do like the Viper. Now the second knife I'll show you here is the Calf Roper Stockman 66 pattern, right? Yeah, 66. All right. Now the first thing I'll say about just Stockmans in general, uh, this was uh the Stockman pattern was actually my first knife I ever got and uh it always seemed to be what my grandfather had in his pocket. So I'm I'm always drawn to these three bladed knives here, especially with the sheep's foot spay and clip configuration. Um, I think the phrase I used in my last video is that this knife is built like a tank. Doesn't matter what blade you have out; it's going to be very comfortable in each grip. Okay, especially with that sheep's foot. Um, very solid build on this knife. Of course, you're going to have to sacrifice a single spring for having three blades. You'll have two springs on the knife. However, I do find it to still be a very pocketable pattern offering from GEC. Uh, one thing I really think turned people off to this Serpentine Stockman is that blade etching. You know, frankly, it's uh, pretty unsightly, if you ask me. Uh, if you do own one of these, of course, my recommendation would be to polish it out or just let the patina form naturally over it, but I do think that really detracts from uh, having that etching. I really feel detracts from the knife overall. Kind of makes it more seem like a, I don't want to say novelty knife, but that blade etching, like I said, really takes away from the traditional feel of this knife. But uh, other than that, great little package offering from GEC. Okay. Now the third knife here that I'll show you guys is a Cuban pin. And of course I've done a video on this when I initially got it. Um, of course I said food prep was one of the biggest things I was concerned with. And uh, real quick, let me just bring to your attention that short master blade on the, the Stockman. Not so good for uh, food prep. You can get the job done, but uh, I much prefer something longer like on this Cuban pin knife. Uh, nice long master clip blade. And they throw in a secondary pen blade on this, on the single spring. Very, um, very, uh, very useful package. Should be able to get done whatever you need to between those two blades on this knife. Like I said, single spring, so it's very pocketable. Uh, if you do, if you are thinking about this knife, uh, some vendors do, I believe, still offer it uh, in their inventory, but uh, I would not recommend dropping it in your front pocket because it's going to get tossed around sideways and it's probably going to roll on you like this. So, you know, right next to my wallet in my back pocket was where I found uh, 
this knife really belongs. Now, the fourth knife that I'll show you here, really been beat to death by Great Eastern Cutlery. And what do I mean by that? Uh, they've made quite a few of these. Uh, this here is from 2013. 2013. Long pull machine swedge. Uh, nice little offering by GEC. Haven't really heard a, a bad thing about the 15 Huckleberry Boys knives. Whether they are the Beer Scout configuration, or a harness jack, or they have the spear blade, or the sheep's foot blade. I don't think the razor blade one went over very well, but... I would imagine if, if that's up your alley, you're going to be very satisfied with the knife. Um, I probably wouldn't mind picking up an extra one of these just because uh, it's probably the most used knife. Knife that I've used most in my collection here. Uh, but I do feel that with this knife, you can perform the task of a larger knife uh, for the size of this uh, 15. Uh, you know, it also performs on par with like a case peanut, a very small knife. So I do feel like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with uh, the 15. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, because these knives are just such a joy to use. So you want to make sure you select the right one. <clears throat> now, so my favorite knife, guys, what I'll, what I'll first start by saying is um, Great Eastern Cutlery's popularity with everybody. It's no coincidence that it all started with the Model 73. So this here was made in 2015, I believe. Yep. Okay. So this is the single-bladed version. And here's why I like this knife real quick. First, I'm a fan of the precision that goes into making these. And what I mean is how that tang is flush with the bolster right there. Okay, that is just a benchmark for quality, and I really like it. Now... Believe it or not, this 73 is actually thinner than the Cuban pen knife. It's actually thinner than the Viper. And what does that mean? It makes it... I cannot stress how pocketable this knife is in your front pocket. It's not going to get tossed around and it's not going to roll on you because of the shape of the frame. So... Whether you carry this in your front pocket, back pocket, watch pocket, it rides very well in all three places. Now, of course it goes without saying that the fit and finish on all these knives is just, you know, out of the park. Now, when it comes to the double-bladed 73s or the liner-locking single-bladed ones, I'm going to say that I recommend the non-locking single-bladed. And here's why. And of course, you know, I own both models, so let's just get them out here and compare. Look at how much thicker that liner lock adds. Look at how much thicker that liner lock is uh, than the uh, non-locking model. That amount of steel makes this knife A, thicker, and B, heavy, uh, noticeably heavier. And uh, the bad thing is about the liner lock... It doesn't ride very well. It doesn't not ride near as well in your front pocket as the other model does. Uh, you really notice that extra weight and in your front pocket anyhow. So I feel if you do get a locking 73, you're going to want maybe a pocket slip. Now, I know, I know Mike uh, offers these with a the pocket clip, so that would be probably a, a good selection. And of course, knives ship free, they're... They have their own rendition of a pocket slip. So that's probably the way to go with the liner lock. Um, it's just noticeably heavier and noticeably thicker. Also, I talked about the precision involved in making this uh, 73 pattern. Now, the way that that locking mechanism sits into the blade means that there's a t uh, kind of a, a slope on the tang. And it's pretty noticeable on my pattern how... The tang just kind of sticks out ever so much from that bolster. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. That really uh, was kind of a turn-off for me. You get used to it, but uh, I really like how on the non-locking model it's flush right there. 
Okay, there's just a little bit of overhang on the locking one. Okay, now obviously, why I don't recommend the 73 with two blades. I don't have one anymore, but I have a 74 ranch hand that I'll show you guys for a visual. When you add that second blade on the 73, uh, you, what you essentially have is a pocket brick. So, I mean, I, I think you're really looking at, um, you're really getting into like maybe a sheath or, you know, a pocket slip, like I said, for a double bladed one. Uh, it's just noticeably heavier, and, you know, personally, I don't find a lot of use for the main spear blade. Spay blade, excuse me. Don't find a lot of use for that. So that's why I feel the single-bladed one is uh, ideal for pocket carry. And now this branch hand, real quick, I'll share with you, was an anniversary present for my girlfriend. You know, great gift idea, if there are any ladies watching. But uh, she got our, our anniversary date engraved there on the blade, so that's pretty cool. I don't actually use this knife because it's so special to me, but uh, like I said, adding that second blade, uh, very heavy in the pocket. So I do feel that the single-bladed 73 non-locking model, it's probably, it's definitely my favorite knife that they have. And I've owned it for quite, quite a while now, and you know how there's that honeymoon phase when you buy a new knife. I've never really fell out of it with this one because it's so good. And I enjoy carrying it so much. Uh, whatever the case, uh, each offering I've showed you, they are very great knives. And um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and uh, kind of getting back into the videos a little bit. I know it's been a long time. I just made one here a few weeks ago, but before that... It had been a while, but uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed what I had to share, and I hope that there will be more to come, so take it easy, guys.